Iron Supporting Food Banks collects food and cash donations for needy families in Newham Borough and beyond. Please consider making a donation via their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of this stream. Come on you Irons! Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the West Ham Massive. Thank you for joining me. Please don't forget to like, comment on and share this stream to your social media platforms. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done so already and make sure you hit the bell icon for alerts on new content. All these things take a couple of seconds of your time. They don't cost you anything and they help to grow the channel from its current position. Please and thank you very much indeed for your support. So, we're going to talk about what we've been talking about pretty much exclusively for the last month or so. Transfers. Obviously, the transfer window, as I recall, this is a matter of 48 plus hours away. The clock is ticking for clubs all around the Premier League and beyond to get their business done. Specifically talking about West Ham United, our own beloved club. We obviously know that we've had a great transfer window up to this point. Eight signings is not to be sniffed at. Good business has been done. However, we've obviously got some players that I think it's fair to say their future lies elsewhere. We've obviously spoken about Kurt Zuma. We've obviously spoken about Danny Ings numerous times besides. There's also the small matter that the Carlos Soler, the signing's pretty much all done. The paperwork's pretty much all there, ready to go across. It's just a question of getting a space released in the squad that is it currently stands for him to occupy, as well as getting a little bit of money in the coffers to balance the books for profit and sustainability rules. So with that in mind, it, as the clock winds round to 11pm on Friday the 30th of August, there are two players that it looks like may well be getting close to a, an exit from London Stadium being finally about to be reached upon. So let's share with you the stories that I'm going to bring with you. Okay, so this is on the One Football website via the publication Inside Football. As you can see, their headline says FC Porto and Villarreal want West Ham man. Now, if you scroll down, what you will quickly find is that the player that is being spoken about is the Moroccan centre back, Nayef Aguerre. Now, obviously, Nayef Aguerre came in at the beginning of the season that finished with a success in the Conference League. He started with a, an injury. He obviously got injured in a pre-season friendly at Ibrox again, in a 3-1 defeat against Rangers. He had a few months out. He came back towards the latter part of that season and played a key role in lifting the trophy that night in Prague. Things haven't really gone according to plan, though. He was it was it 28 games I think he had in the Premier League last season or was that in all competitions I can't remember I think it was in the Premier League just off the top of my head and obviously the new managers come in he, he doesn't really seem to fancy him he made a mistake in the game a pretty season friendly at home against Celta Vigo which cost a goal and I think that was probably his goose cooked as far as the new manager is concerned he's not been involved in either Premier League squad since that point so I think it's fair to say that the £35 million man needs to move on. Now, the story the other day was that he had turned down. There was actually two stories that I saw. One said that a loan move to an unnamed German club had been rejected by Naya Fager and his representatives. And then there was another story that actually named Wolfsburg. Now, I don't know whether it was Wolfsburg plus another unnamed German club or the unknown German club was actually Wolfsburg. There you go. But he's obviously rejected a move to the Bundesliga. But now it appears that he has emerged as a priority target, as this publication states here, for both FC Porto and Villarreal in the final days of the summer transfer window. It also goes on to say that he has got interest from Saudi Arabia, specifically Al-Itihad. Now, Al-Itihad are 
coached by Laurent Blanc, and they also have in their ranks players such as Ungolo Kante, Karim Benzema, who is their captain, and Moussa Diabe. Now, the connection there is that obviously with Naya Fagare being Moroccan, he speaks French. So there is a connection there. And obviously we got him from Stade René, who play in Ligue 1. So he would be around a certain clutch of players who he could easily converse with. So that's possibly going to be another another one that could be something that's quite agreeable to Naya Fagare. But certainly, if he wants to stay in Europe, he has options on the Iberian Peninsula, either side. He could either go into Portugal, he could go to the former Champions League winners, Porto, or he could go to the former Europa League winners, Villarreal. Either way, it's it's a good move for him. Hopefully, hopefully something can come of this. I think if we can get something around about, I mean, we, as I say, we paid 35 million quid for him what, two years ago? And obviously we've got to a point, I think the best thing for both parties is that we just move on and just draw a line under it. But Naya Fagare, he's attracting interest. It looks like there's three clubs that are on the horizon. The question will obviously be whether the player himself fancies a move to either Porto, Villarreal or Al Itihad in the Saudi Pro League. The next player I want to talk about is again a player that we've mentioned numerous times. And again, I'll show you the story that we're going to refer to. So this is again on the One Football website, again from Inside Football. And it says there on the headline that Southampton, I loan swoop for a West Ham attacker. Now, obviously, we've had tenuous links, if nothing else, to a couple of other players, namely James Ward-Prowse and Danny Ings to Southampton. However, it appears that nothing has come to fruition as of yet, it may well in the remaining time. But this story goes on to say that Southampton are looking to make a late loan move for Maxwell Cornet. Obviously, the Ivory Coast hitman came in again, similar to Naya Fagare, came in big reputation. He did well at Burnley in the Premier League the season that they got relegated. But he, a lot of Burnley fans will would say that he was actually one of their better performers that season. He came into West Ham along with a number of other players, such as Jan Lucas Gamaka, for example. And he came in, and I thought actually at the beginning, he looked quite lively. But then he got an injury very early on. And basically, it's never really worked out for him since then. I think there's possibly some reasons that, that could be identified as, as reasons for it. I think, quite frankly, I think that the fact that Maxwell Cornet, from what we understand, went away from the club as far as the medical support and guidance was concerned and got his own people involved in France. I don't think that went down too well with the hierarchy and specifically David Moyes himself. And even when he was utilised, it didn't seem that he, he knew what the offside law, it seems that he completely forgot how to stay onside in a game of football. Uh, not only that, but the couple of times where he did do something of note, like the goal away at Chelsea, that goal was ruled out for a vicious boot into the chest of Eduard Mendy, who was carted off to hospital with his ribs and sternum caved in. Yeah, do you remember that? Um, yeah, I mean, any time that he did do anything that was of note, it didn't seem that he gained any traction off of the back of it. I remember last season, I think he got a goal away at Sheffield United, um, but he, he didn't get picked for the next game. He stayed on the bench. His confidence has just noticeably dwindling before his eyes. I think he's a player. I really do. And I think that he'll probably go somewhere else and you'll look at him again and think, actually, why couldn't we get something out of him? And maybe Southampton's the destination for him, a little way down the M3 at St. Mary's there. Maybe that's the place he's going to end up making a success of it. Um, but as it says there, it is a loan move. Now, it doesn't actually spec specify in this story whether it is a loan with any sort of option or or obligation to buy. It just says that there's a loan move that Southampton are contemplating. Personally, I hope both of these players go on and I hope that they go on to have a fruitful career. I, I wish them the very best of luck. We need to make a space in the squad some way, somehow. It's very apparent that the manager, Julien Lopetegui, wants to get this piece of the jigsaw in in Carlos Soler. At the moment, he's unable to do so, partly due to finances, 
and but more principally, it's to do with having a space in the squad in its current form for the player to actually drop into, which at the minute, until we get a player out, we can't do that. So I'm hopeful for a number of reasons that we can get at least one or possibly both of these players out, or maybe a couple more besides. Like I say, Kurt Zoom is another one that we need to try and get out of the door. I think that's very likely to happen. Um, obviously, with him looking to go to the Saudi Pro League as well, he may well be playing on opposite te- opposite sides of the same pitch to his former teammate, Naya Fager, if they both go to the Saudi Pro League with Kurt Zuma going potentially to Al Oruba, who have recently been promoted to the Saudi Pro League. And then, obviously, you've got other players like James Ward-Prowse. You've got other players like um, Danny Ings. If we can get a few of these out the door and make the space in the squad and, and balance the books a little bit, I think that would be it to the, our advantage. Get your comments in the section below, though, guys. That's what it's there for. I'm giving you my opinion. My opinion might be right. It might be wrong. And even if I'm right and even if I'm wrong, I'd be quite happy to read some of your comments and see what you guys think. So get the comments in. That's what it's there for. This is your channel. I want to hear your opinions. And as always, guys, thank you very much for joining us. Please don't forget to drop a like on the stream. Comment on it, as I say, in the section below. Please do that. And make sure to share the stream onto your social media platforms as well. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new around here. And hit the bell icon for alerts of new content. And as always, guys, these things are free for you to do. They take a couple of seconds in your time. And you'll be helping to grow the channel from its current base. Thank you very much indeed for your support in this matter. Talking of support, ladies and gentlemen, please don't forget to lend your support, if you can, to the Iron Supporting Food Banks charity. Come on, you Irons. We'll see you next time. Iron Supporting Food Banks collects food and cash donations for needy families in Newham Borough and beyond. Please consider making a donation via their Just Giving page, the link for which you will find in the description section of this stream. Come on, you Irons.